Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about the Nims of Sicilian. Now, um, yeah, the, we'll just enter the opening first. So after e4, c5, knight f3, and knight f6, this marks the start of the Nims of Sicilian. And if you want to go further, then um, the most principled move obviously is e5. And for knight d5, knight c3. Um, so in this position, there are many moves. And uh, what this video is going to focus on is not to provide a practical repertoire. Rather, this is the most probably one of the most unpractical things that you could do in chess, studying the ins and outs of uh, a way to punish a, like an inferior Sicilian. Um, because what I'm going to be talking about here is essentially after e6, playing the move knight e4. Now, um, I really like the approach that uh, Christoph Selecki, international master from Germany, uh, recommends with knight takes d5, e d5, and d4. And after knight c6, Taking on c5 here is a very strong move. Um, essentially, I'm not going to give all the lines, obviously, because that's his um, it's his research and it's all um, his works, so I'm not going to plagiarize it. But essentially, after bishop c5 and queen takes d5 and queen b6, there's this very strong bishop c4 move, sacrificing the f2 pawn, and the king later comes to e2. And there are a lot of complications, but in all of the lines, white ends up better there. And I think that's a very practical um, weapon that you could use um, if you want to avoid all the theory and just get a great position from the opening. And personally, I think I would play that myself. But in this video, uh, the reason that I'm saying uh, this is one of the most unpractical things you could do is that I'm not going to be talking about um, knight takes d5 here. Um, I'm going to be talking about knight e4, which is a move that uh, tries to take control of the dark squares here. First off, um, we notice that in the Nims of Sicilian, after playing this move e6, um, the dark square on, especially on d6, is exceptionally weak. So oftentimes we can like play um, eventually d4, place the bishop on f4, um, and the plant the knight on d6, uh, giving a check. And um, even though we may sacrifice the pawn sometimes, uh, eventually we get a lot of compensation there. And some of the main ideas in this opening, um, as an overview that I would like to give, is that we can play the move h4, h5. Um, yeah, I mean, after h4, we just want to keep pushing the pawn forward. And with this maneuver, we can also um, prepare the move rook h3 to g3 at some point. Um, and normally, our king lands on the queen side, uh, where we play queen e2. So not the natural queen d2, but queen e2. So that's a few of the main points. Uh, we're also we're also going to be talking about knight takes c3 here. Um, and also the uh, mistake, which is knight b6. So... Um, before going to the actual concrete variations, I just want to mention that if you're preparing for a long game, like a classical game, then maybe this video is going to be very, very useful for you. However, um, if you're playing a blitz game um, where the complications are insane and um, you just want to get like a good position, I do not recommend playing this way. So um, first off, let's cover the sidelines. Knight takes c3. We play d takes c3. Obviously, we want to open up the bishops. And here there are a couple of moves. D5 seems the most natural, I would think. But after E takes D6, um, there are two moves. If E takes D6 happens, then we can play Bishop C4, preventing any D5s. And here, let's see Knight D7, preparing Knight B6 and possibly D5. And here we can play Bishop G5, um, provoking F6 or either Bishop E7. If Bishop E7 happens, then I think we're very happy to, yeah, okay, the computer says to pin the um, to pin the Bishop, which I think is a pretty good option. And yeah, we should um, have a definitely an advantage here. Um, but if not, then f6 is critical and we can play castles here, which is pretty ridiculous. Uh, the point is that after f6 g5, rook e1 check, bishop e7 and queen takes d6, black is completely busted here. For example, knight b6 I look at and there's bishop e5 check, bishop d7 and queen e5 is a ridiculously strong move. Um, point is after bishop b5, uh, that's a complete blunder because of queen takes g7, rook f8, and rook ad1. And notice that all of our pieces are in the attack here. The only thing that we need to do next is knight takes g5. I mean, there's no way to stop knight takes g7, and the king is still stuck in the center. This is completely busted. For example, queen c7 at g5, rook d8, and knight e6. It's game over. So, uh, taking the bishop is not possible, and castles here looks, I mean, looks like the only way to get out of any trouble, but... We simply take on d7, queen takes d7, rook takes, uh, queen takes d7. We're up a pawn here, g5 is possibly can drop. We're also gonna put pressure on the b7 pawn. This is uh, also pretty much game over. So, um, essentially this, um, 
Yeah, this 97 move is not really too good. But bishop e7 trying to speed up the development uh, with castles here. Weakness is reply with bishop f4. And after castles, we play queen e2. So every other game, almost every other game in the database has gone queen d2. But the only problem with this um, move is that after knight d7, knight is coming to b6 with tempo. So after castles, knight b6, uh, Balak is going to get in d5 here and possibly even fight for some advantage or even like an attack here uh, on the queen side. So we play queen e2. And the difference is that after knight e7 and castle tong, knight b6 is not so strong because we just play rook h1 and our bishop on c4 is defended. Uh, and we notice that all of our pieces are active here. It's, um, yeah, this is just very bad uh, for black. And so uh, after, if knight d7 and knight b6 is not so strong, then let's see rook e8. We just simply castle and we're going to play rook h1 next. Um, d6, the d6 pawn is a backward pawn. It can't be pushed. Black is going to like really face uh, difficulties in this middle game. So I just want to stop there before we go in uh, too much detail. And queen takes d6 here. Um, we can actually get a lot of advantage after queen takes d6, ed6, and bishop f4. Simply targeting this pawn. And uh, d5, I think we just uh, simply attack it with castles. For example, castles and then bishop e6. I would assume, yeah, okay, knight g5 or one of these moves are pretty good. Knight c6 and yeah, we can play g3, put more pressure on the pawn possibly. Um, or even like take on e6 first and then play bishop h3, which looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm going to stop there. And if knight c6, then we can castle here, attacking the d6 pawn. And after bishop e6, we just take on d6. We're up upon very good shape. And if bishop e6 happens, then we castle again, d5 and knight g5. Um, so this is quite a thematic idea, obviously. I mean, uh, more experienced players will realize that uh, going after this bishop is quite a strong idea. And after bishop e7, we take on e6 and then play g3 again, preparing bishop h3. So knight c6, rook e1 is a strong move, preventing an e5 pushes. And after king f7, bishop h3, knight d8 is forced. c4 is a very strong move. Uh, this makes more weaknesses. So if d4 happens, then I think we can just try to double up with rook e2 and rook h1, and this is completely uh, winning. And if d takes c4 happens, then these pawn weaknesses are uh, absolutely terrible. We can go again with the same idea of rook e3 and rook h1. Uh, let's say bishop f6, rook a d1 now, uh, making use of the open file, and rook e8, bishop c7 is a nice move. Um, so the idea at some point is that First off, we can bring the rook into the game with rook d7, but we're in no rush to do that. Um, we can take the knight eventually uh, and then take on e6, that's an idea. And so let's say rook c8, we'll play rook d7. And if king g6 happens, then we play f4. And we notice that all of these pawn weaknesses are um, very detrimental to black's position. And at some point, black is going to need to uh, give back the pawn. For example, with rook e7, where we can just take, take, and take here, um, and take on e6 with the bishop. Uh, all of these uh, weaknesses are very apparent, and the king is not safe here. So that's completely winning. And if not king g6, rook e7, then obviously we just take on d8 um, with the bishop, and rook takes uh, d7, bishop d6, king e8, bishop takes f6 is a nice move. And after this exchange, we're completely winning. Rook a3, a6, rook a4, and obviously b5 loses the a pawn, so this is very good for white and let's see the other moves okay we're gonna travel back in time here and let's see i think we've covered bishop e6 and we've covered all those moves uh, so let's just go back um yeah here so we've covered this line with d5 let's cover e6 here so again as i've mentioned before this move makes a lot of weaknesses uh in the um, dark squares of black's position, but the difference is that uh, black has already traded the knight on c3 And so our typical idea of knight e4 and knight d6 is not possible However, we can do this uh, eventually in another way with for example knight d2 to e4 or knight d2 to c4 to d6 And this is going to be very strong as we will see So we just play bishop d3 simple developing move uh, Placing the bishop on the best square After knight c6 we play queen e2 very standard. We prepare to castle queen side here and after queen c7, we play bishop f4. Um, yeah, reinforcing the d6 square. b6, the only way really to get the bishop into the game. And simply here, we just castle. Bishop b7 and h4. Uh, again, one of the typical ideas to play h5. 
h6, h5 to fix the pawns. And after castles, um, we need to understand here that black has a very serious uh, way of making counterplay, which is to play the move d5. So for example, what I at first glance, I wanted to play rook h3 to g3, but I realized that after d5, uh, this obviously white still has the advantage here, but um, this is uh, not as clear. Uh, yeah, for example, rook g3, f6, the position is still quite compact here for black. So we are better here, but there's a better way to uh, take advantage of this. And the move here is bishop b5. So I really want you to pay attention to this move. Um, the point is that first off, we're opening the rook on the d file and we're preparing a favorable exchange on the d file here. Uh, and the bishop is not in the way, essentially. Um, I think we can also play bishop e4, but okay, uh, for the... Uh, yeah, in this video, I'm just going to be talking about bishop b5. And for d5, we take on d6. Bishop takes d6. Rook takes d6. Rook d6. Bishop d6. Queen d6. And we play the move b3 here. So, uh, black wants to play queen f4. So, we secure the king and place it on a better square with uh, king b2 uh, to come. So, for example, queen f4, king b2, rook d8. This looks quite active, but we can make use of this uh, open h file and play rook h4 here. Queen f6 and then rook queen e3. To prepare rook f4 and essentially um what should be in very good shape uh, in here and one of the sample lines that the computer gives is knight b4 rook f4 knight d5 rook f6 knight takes c3 rook takes f7 knight d1 king c1 knight takes c3 and bishop c4 b5 bishop b6 king b8 and bishop d7 is a very nice move to uh, pressure this pawn so um notice and also covering off uh, the rook so for example here here and knight b4, we just lose the pawn, possibly. Or, yeah, okay, the computer also recommends knight e5, um, which is very brutal. I think it's possibly threatening c3 or bishop b5, right, like right now. So that's a pretty good line, I would say. Um, and, yeah, okay, the computer recommends bishop f3 and the gf3. We're better here, definitely, with more active pieces. Um, so, yeah. Let's go back. Um, okay, let's see where we should come back to. Yeah, so I think we've covered e6 here, right? Yeah, essentially that one long line. And here, knight c6 is the main move. Um, if we go into this knight takes c3 uh, move. Um, let's see, knight takes c3, and then yeah, knight c6 here. So uh, in here, we play bishop f4, very standard. The bishop belongs on f4 like at least in this position. And if queen b6, we just play b3. Like for example, e6, more weaknesses. We're happy to see this. Knight d2 to c4 is very strong. And let's say queen a5 happens, then we play queen f3 to defend the c3 pawn. b5, a4, rook b8, bishop b2, bishop a6, castles. And now this position is very awkward for black. The uh, queen on a5 is uh, very misplaced. And after b4, we just take on a6, queen takes a6 and knight c4. Making use again of the dark square weaknesses. So b takes c3, queen takes c3, knight e4, rook, e, rook f e1. Don't fall into any forks. And after bishop e7, rook a d1, our pieces are all uh, immensely active here. For example, castles, bishop e3, knight f5. We can take on d7 here. And we can get into this position where our queen is insanely active. Uh, all of our pieces is, essentially are, and we're just better. But if not for queen a5, then let's say queen c7. I would say this is more natural, um, but we just play knight c4 here. And there are a couple of moves here. I mean, if you want to really get into the nitty gritty stuff, then b5 here is possible. But again, we play knight d6, bishop d6, and queen takes d6. Very important move. The problem is that we, if we play e takes d6, queen a5 happens. And this is a very annoying move to meet because the next move that black is going to play is b4. So for example, queen a5, queen d2, and b4, um, black definitely gets some counterplay here. We don't want to play c4 because that allows the knight to come to d4. And yeah, this is not the best. The best here is queen takes d6. The point is that after we exchange and b4 happens, then we can play bishop e3 and target the um, weak pawn on c5. Uh, after the queens are exchanged, um, the weaknesses in black position are, are c more apparent. So if it's, for example, b takes e3, we take on c5, a5. And here we play the nice move h4. The idea is not so much to go for h5, but to prepare rook h3 to, uh, to take the c3 pawn, which is now immensely weak. And uh, black, is in, black is in terrible shape here. 
I wouldn't um, be surprised if black just collapses in the next uh, five to ten moves. And essentially, uh, let's see, a5 is just a terrible move because we're prepared to meet it with b4. And now we have a pass pawn here, prepared to run up the board, a3, b5, rook h3, everything is coming into play. So uh, that covers the move b5. Let's cover the move b6, which I think is more natural. But note that in this position, um, the bishop really wants to get out. Like bishop e7 castles. Even in that position, I think black uh, white would be still way better. But one uh, thing about this b6 move is that it cuts off the queen from possibly going to a5. So now we can play queen g4, preventing any bishop development. And after h5, queen g5, um, we're gonna castle next. We're gonna play. Like, we're gonna play knight d6. Black cannot develop the bishop to e7 because um, of the uh, weak g7 pawn. And um, we're in fantastic shape here. Yeah, essentially. Um, yeah, those are all the arrows. Um, so I think that covers b6 and b5. And let's cover f6 here, which I think is um, quite an um, interesting move. We play bishop d3 here, preparing queen h5 to uh, win some material. And after g6, we play knight d6 check. Bishop takes d6, e d6, and queen a5. So, thematic idea. But here we simply play queen d2, and there is no counterplay of b5, b4 here. So, for example, castles, we play h4, and we get an attack. Our king is actually quite safe in the center of the board here. Um, if we want to, then we can play like a4 and castles if needed. But obviously, I would be uh, I would be very um, like wary of uh, this a6, b5 plan from black. But we're better here, for sure. Um. Yeah, so that covers this queen b6 move, I think. And I don't think we've covered e6 here, so we'll just see queen d2. And if queen b6, we just play castles here. And this is a really nice position. I'm going to stop here because essentially our plan is to play h4, h5. Um, we can move the king to b1, uh, maybe in the next move. Uh, and we can play queen e3 to bring the knight to d2, to e4, and then to infiltrate the dark squares. And so this opening, when black... Um, weakens all of the dark swords around the, uh, it, yeah, especially d6 here, we can normally plant the knight on d6 ourselves. So that's a very nice position. And if queen c7, then we play h4. Um, castling is possible here, but I really don't like the position after a6, uh, c4 here to prevent any b5. But still, um, black goes for b5, and we're not going to open up the a file for black um, for black's rook, but um, this is less clear, I think, than just going for h4 immediately. Uh, after h6, we play h5. Typical idea, as we've seen in many lines, to fix the pawns. Um, and after b6, we play castles. So now a6, b5 takes one extra tempo, so we're not too worried about this. For example, bishop b7, king b1, castles, rook h3 is a nice idea. Um, preparing rook g3. After knight e7, bishop h2. Um, this steps out of any knight e5 jumps with tempo, so it's a quite a useful move. And after g5 here, we just take on g6, knight g6, and um, here, the way I would explain it is we don't, we just don't want to allow this h pawn to push, be pushed forward. Um, so rook h5 here is a very nice move, um, because if the pawn was to be pushed forward, then bishop h6 could come, and some kind of play would be um, concerning. So rook h5 here, let's say rook g8. Now we play bishop g3. So. Another point that I want to bring up in the Nimzovic uh, Sicilian is that we need to play it prophylactically and really smart. Because if black gets in, in this position, if black gets uh, makes use of the f5 or d5 square, for example, plays knight e7 to d5 or f5, um, then it's going to get less clear. Um, this bishop looks pretty good right now, so we do need to be, uh, we do need to be careful here. So in anticipation of the knight e7 to d5 or f5, uh, or f5, we play bishop g3. So after knight e7, we play bishop h4. Uh, we're pinning this knight so it can't move. And after, let's say, rook e8, preparing, um, yeah, knight f5, then we can play bishop b5, applying more pressure on d7. And here, um, if black doesn't want to, uh, if black doesn't want to keep the pawn, then bishop c6 is forced. And here we can just take on c6, uh, knight c6, and then play g3 here. Uh, we're defending the pawn from being attacked and our position is just extremely dominating um this bishop on h4 is just immensely powerful the bishop on f8 cannot move because it's defending h6 and we're in a very good shape so um that's one of the points that i want to bring up we need to be very uh, smart in dealing with the position 
So that's why I recommend playing this maybe in a um, longer time controls um, where you can actually think about the moves. So yeah, I think I've covered everything in this position uh, with knight c3 and knight c6. Uh, let's cover knight b6 here, which is just a bad move. Obviously we play a4. I mean, the knight on b6 is, just looks terrible. So we try to kick it with a5. And if d5 happens here, then we can take on d6, ed6, and play d4, blasting open the position. If uh, black decides to take on, uh, let's say, d4 here, then I think after knight d4, this pawn is going to be uh, isolated and weak, and we're going to eventually pile up pressure on it. So bishop e7 is logical, and here we just take on c5, dc5 and queen 68, uh, bishop 68. And the problem with black position is that even though they've gotten the queens off the board and the material is equal, this pawn on c5 is very weak and this knight on b6 is very misplaced. Uh, also, we notice that black's development is just garbage. So after bishop e3 attacking the uh, c5 pawn, knight 6 d7 is forced, uh, not to allow like here, and then e5 I think is just winning the knight. It's trapped. So knight 6 to d7 and knight e4 here is a nice move to threaten knight d6. And so bishop a5 is... Um, probably necessary, but here we just block with the other knight, knight fd2. After castles and castles, um, I'm gonna stop here because we can notice that the c5 pawn is weak. Um, the bishop on a5 is exceptionally misplaced. Um, we're gonna play g3 and bishop g2 to pile up pressure on the long diagonal, and possibly we can play f4 to strengthen our control over the position. And this is just a fantastic position. Computer already says plus three, which is immense. And if a5 happens here, which I think is the most natural, we can play d4. And the point is that after c takes d4, we play queen takes d4. Um, seems kind of odd, but the queen is actually really nicely placed in the center of the board. And the knight on b6 is rather destabilized uh, because this a pawn has already moved. So at some point, we can play bishop e3 to pile up pressure on it. So let's say d6, then we just play bishop e3. And if knight 8 d7, then we just play bishop b5. Um, this pin is not going to be released and we're just going to take a, uh, take the knight on b6 next we're winning material here and if knight 6 d7 then we play e takes d6 knight c6 d takes e7 is a nice intermezzo because um black cannot take on e7 with the bishop because of queen g7 let's say bishop f6 i think queen g3 oops um yeah something like this and queen g3 here is a nice move next we're just going to castle or uh, even castle short, we're up two pawns here. So queen e7 is forced, and we just uh, play queen d2, getting the queen out of the attack. After queen d8, preparing bishop e7 and castles, um, we're gonna castle along here, and after bishop e7, we play bishop e5. Uh, the threat here, um, is there any threats? I guess we, after castles, the, yeah, queen e2, then now we have a threat. We're preparing queen c4 here uh, to activate the queen, and also open up the uh, rooks, uh, vision here. So after rook e8, we play queen c4, bishop f6, and rook h1. We mobilize all of our pieces very naturally. Let's say h6, knight d5, uh, bishop e5, we just take on e5, knight d takes e5, and queen f4. Um, okay, this is, you don't need to memorize everything here, obviously, but I just want to give a sample line here. And notice that we're just up one pawn, but the computer already says plus seven, which is basically the entire story of this opening. It's a bad opening, objectively, because what can get such an enormous position, but uh, dealing with this position accurately from the white side is far from easy. Let's say after bishop d7, we play knight b6, rook b8, and queen g3 is a nice move, threatening uh, bishop takes h6. So after h5, knight takes d7, knight takes d7, and queen h3, uh, let's say rook e7 and rook d5. Um, this h5 pawn is, is going to fall. We also have the threat of rook e to d1, and this is going to be um, awful. The computer already recommends playing knight f6 to give up the queen, which is not a good sign. So um, that covers the move d6 here. Let's see knight c6, which is most natural. We just play queen e4. And after d5 here, we're going to follow game uh, between two leeches players, 2300 plus. e takes d6, queen d6, and bishop e3. So what is played in the game is bishop f4, which is fine, I guess. After queen b4, castles. This position is still very good for um, for white, but stronger here is bishop e3 to harass the knight on b6. And after queen b4, castles, queen takes e4, knight takes e4. Notice that we black cannot take on, uh, on a4 here because of bishop e5. And the knight is actually trapped. 
So after like, for example, bishop f5, knight g3, both pieces are hanging, we're gonna win material. And of knight d7 here, which is most natural, we play knight d4. We're threatening knight b5 here. Uh, and if, let's say, knight takes d4, then rook d4. And I think next move, we're gonna play bishop b5 to pile up the pressure, uh, bring the other rook into the game, um, completely winning here. Uh, and if g6 happens, then we play knight b5. And this position is awful. Like, for example, rook b8 is forced. Um, it's almost forced, I would say. And then knight c7, king d8, and then we play knight d5. Um, and this position is immensely active. Bishop g7, we play bishop b5, the center place for the bishop. After king e8, we play rook hg1, activating both rooks. King f8, bishop f4, um, yeah, making uh, white play e5. After bishop e3, let's say f5, knight d6. And I just want you to look at this position, and this is like the most overwhelming position you could hope for in chess. <laughs> Like, the knight is coming to c7, um, we can play, I mean, if e4 happens to open up the bishop, then we can play f3, yeah, a lot, a lot of lines that the computer says. But essentially, this position is completely crushing. Um, so, yeah. So, that covers this line. So, I think that covers this knight b6 move. And so, now we get into the real um, meat, meat and potatoes of... What most people are going to play, which is e6. Um, the recommendation that um, yeah that uh, I am Christoph Selecki chose was obviously knight d5, and I think that's very that's a very practical weapon. But here I want to talk about knight e4. Now we're threatening to come into d6, so let's say knight c6. Then we can play c4 and get a lot of tempi here. Knight f4 is a mistake because of d4, attacking the knight. After knight g6, knight d6, bishop d6, e d6, c takes d4. Uh, knight takes e4, queen a5, bishop d2, queen e5, bishop e3, queen takes d6, um, so black wins the pawn, but notice after knight b5, we don't care about the pawn at all, because all of the dark squares around the black king are weakened. After queen d1, rook uh, takes d1, castles, bishop c5, um, let's say rook d8, bishop d6, b6, and h4 here, uh, preparing h5, and after h5, we play bishop e2. This position is awful. Um, we're going to definitely win back the pawn on h5. Obviously, h5 is not forced, but we can essentially see the position. How is black going to develop here? It's very difficult. Let's say bishop b7, and we, I mean, we just take on h5. Um, a6, knight c7, I would say it's looking very good here. Bishop g6, e g6, yeah, here. Rook h3. This is completely over. Yeah. So that covers the move knight f4. Let's see knight b6 here, the more natural. Again, we play d4, blessing open the center. After cd4, we play the move knight d6. So this is very country, uh, like, not natural at all. Um, but this is very, this is a very strong move. After bishop d6 and e d6, let's see castles here. We'll just take on d4 with the knight. Queen f6, knight f3. We don't want to exchange pieces and liberate the position. So let's see e5, c5, queen f5 is a, is a tricky move. But we just play c takes b6 and knight b5 here is the idea to gang up in c2 square. But we simply play king e2, which is I should probably put a double exclaim on that actually. Um, just stepping out of any knight c2 forks and let's say knight c2, play queen d3, and this is the entire idea. Um, yeah, if if black decides to take over here and and takes on uh, on a1, then I would assume yeah, king c3. Um, not falling into any e4 tricks, a b6, and possibly a3. Uh, I think this knight is going to be trapped eventually with like um, bishop, yeah, bishop e3, and then bishop c4, and the uh, knight is going to be trapped here. And our pawn in d6 is just such an important, such, yeah, it's, it's it's immensely strong here, and hard for black to develop this bishop on c8. So this is completely winning. And if e4 happens, then queen takes c2, e takes f3, and king d1. Obviously defending our um, yeah, our queen here. After e, uh, f takes g2, we play bishop g2, and after queen e5, let's say queen d3. Uh, we're up a piece here, so after a b6, rook e1, um, no need to look further. Uh, we're completely winning here, up a piece. So uh, these complications favor um, white for sure. Uh, after queen f6, both queen f6 and castles. Remember castles, we play knight d4. Um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think we've seen queen f6 yet, so I guess we'll cover this one. We play bishop d3, and after e5, strengthening the d4 pawn, play c5 here, knight d5 and castles. Very calm. And after castles, we play bishop e4. Let's see, let's say knight f4 is the most natural. We simply take it, and after queen f4, we'll keep one. Um, still, black faces the problem of the bishop on c8 not being able to see the light of day. And we're also threatening bishop c6 and taking on e5. Or maybe like just maintaining the pressure and um, not letting this bishop liberate. So maybe taking the pawn isn't isn't best, but it's a, it's an idea. So let's say rook e8. We play b4 here, which is immensely strong. After knight b4, play knight takes d4. And this is very nice. Bishop takes h7, uh, king h7, and rook e8. We are completely winning here. The point is that the knight on b4 is not far from. Um, it's still far from being safe. Um, black's pieces are also undeveloped. And even though black has two pieces for the rook, we are going to play rook b1 to b3 to g3 perhaps uh, to attack the uh, black king. And this is uh, going to be winning. So um, this entire I, you know, this entire plan of, um, let's say, 94 and then 96 is completely bad here. Um, the critical move here is f5, and uh, I've checked the database of international master Min Lei uh, on chess.com, and he's obviously one of the world's leading experts on this, playing this in blitz against the world's best players. And I just don't understand, um, I mean, I understand why he would play it, because it gets out of theory, um, but this line is not very good at all, because here we do not want to take an f6. Um, we absolutely do not want to do, want to do that and give black the uh, free d pawn to be pushed forward. Um, so we play knight c3 here, which is very key. And if knight c3 happens, then after dc3, let's say d5, we take on d6. If bishop d6, we just play bishop b5 check. And knight c6, for example, we double the pawns, bc6, and bishop g5. Um, so note that before um, black uh, could not play like something like bishop d7 or something or like that because the d6 bishop is hanging so we make use of this bishop b5 check double the pawns and play bishop g5 pressing the queen queen c7 and we just play queen d3 here preparing um long castles so after h6 bishop e3 castles 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 long obviously bishop e7 queen c4 and targeting these all of these weak pawns here Let's say queen a5, we play knight e5. It's a very nice move, attacking this guy. And que the queen on a5 uh, prepares bishop a6, but um, yeah, it's not really anything to be concerned about because bishop a6 now I think just runs into knight c6 with a fork uh, on the queen and the bishop. So bishop f6, uh, f4 is a nice move. After bishop e5, f5, e5, and um, the bishop still can't play to a6 because the e6 pawn is weak. And so let's say rook f7, um, trying to... Possibly double up uh, on the b-file or just like cover the e6 pawn from being taken with check. And here we just play a3. Uh, c5 is going to fall next. We're going to be up a pawn. Uh, c6 is also very weak still. So this is completely win uh, winning for us. So bishop d6, just remember this bishop b5 check to disturb um, black's development. And we should be in good shape. And queen d6 here, we play queen e2, avoiding the queen exchange. Knight c6 and g3. Um, the idea is to play bishop f4, and this was played, I think, once, um, yeah, against two uh, masters here, so 2200 versus 2400, um, and queen c7, bishop g2, um, so I think in that game, h4 was played, which is not best, so bishop g2, uh, very standard, bishop d6, and bishop e3, castles, and then we castle long again, and here e5 is um, just a dubious move here, because we have this move knight g5, and we are going to play either queen c4 or bishop d5. And all of the, I mean, this king is just way too exposed on this diagonal. So um, additionally, we can also see some ideas of like queen c4, king h8, and then rook takes d6 with um, bishop takes c5 and a skewer there. That's one idea that I think it may show up. And here, let's see h6, preventing knight g5, and now preparing e5. We just play rook h1. And if f4... Um, I think e5 still runs into any queen c4, and yeah, especially queen c4 and rook d6 there works. For example, e5, uh, queen c4, um, let's just say king h8, then rook d6, uh, and with bishop c5 coming next. 
And here I have f4, which is the strongest, then g f4, bishop f4, and a4. Now, do I know why a4 is played? Absolutely not. But the computer says that this is good, and I'm going to believe the computer. Um, yeah, I think uh, in this position, there are many ways to proceed. One idea is like bishop h1 to prepare the rook coming to g1, I believe. And another idea is just to play like queen c4 or even b3 to prepare king b2 and solidify the position there. Um, yeah, even king b1 here I think is very natural. So I think that's, we're just going to stop there. Uh, the position is already quite good. Um, and so this covers the d5 move. Let's see d6. We play h4. Um, we're just going to see what black decides to do and with the setup. Let's say bishop b7 and bishop f4. So the bishop belongs here. Let's say knight c6, h5, knight e7, and c4. So preventing any knight e5 jumps. Let's say queen c7, which is the most natural square for the queen, and possibly the only one. We just play bishop e2 here. Um, and we're going to play queen d2 next, and we're just going to castle. For example, knight c6, queen d2, bishop e7, and we castle long. Uh, black castles long and rook h3 here to g3 is very strong and any d5 moves uh, are not possible now because our bishop and our queen and rook are sufficiently guarding that square so we are in very good shape here with rook g3 coming so the computer says this is just plus 0.5 but this is a lot more pleasant to play so um, that covers the b6 move i think let's see knight c6 which is most natural we play bishop f4 like usual Queen b6 and play queen c1 here. Now, why don't we play b3? The problem with b3 is again this annoying move of queen a5. After queen d2, knight e7, we see that uh, the problem with um, if we're not careful is that we can immediately get punished here because we do not want to play c4 to trade off the queens. Um, and uh, yeah, that would I think just completely ruin our position because our bishop uh, does not have a great diagonal here to work with. Um, so yeah, we do not want to do that. And so do not play b3 here. We have to play queen c1. Always see that um, is a possibility here. And queen c7, we play h4, like usual. a6 and a4, preventing any b5 pushes. Let's say b6, h5, bishop b7, queen e3 is a nice move. Um, next, I think uh, if knight e7 happens, then we're okay with playing c4. Um, at all costs, we need to prevent the knight coming, from D5, uh, knight coming to d5. And... Um, we have excellent play here, rook h3, rook g3, possibly, and just great development overall. So that covers this knight c6 move, I think. Now, um, do we cover everything? Um, knight c3, g c3. Yeah, I think we've covered this, right? And knight e7, so yeah. This one is, I think, what we didn't cover. And this is the choice of all strong players. So knight e7 is something that you need to know. Absolutely need to know. And the few games that uh, International Master Minley has in the database covers this line. And I think Anish Giri also has been on the uh, white side of this against Minley himself. And so the critical move here is to play knight b5 um, to prepare knight g6, checkmate. And knight g6 here. And now we play, okay, th there are many moves here. b4 is, is a very interesting move, um, but for the sake of simplicity, I won't recommend this move. I'm just gonna wipe it off of the face, off the face of this earth, and I'm gonna be talking about two moves. H4 is possible and also a good option. After knight c6, we play c3, preparing uh, d4. So a6 is kind of a must. And now we infiltrate with the knight, bishop b6, e6, and castles. We play h5. After knight h8, we play d4. And this position is uh, excellent for white. It's not flat out winning or anything, but uh, it's very pleasant. So I guess h4 is a nice move that if you want to just keep it simple. But b3 here was the cho uh, choice of Anish Giri, as you see here, Anish on YouTube versus Mati Pro, um, which is Minlay. And a6 is an inaccuracy. We play knight d6 here. After ED, uh, bishop takes d6 and ed6, uh, queen b6 was chosen by um, Minlay. And after bishop b2 um, and castles, h4. Uh, so Anish shows the correct line here. After queen d6 and h5, uh, knight h8, um, I think the move, yeah, play in the game is d4 here, uh, chosen by Anish. Um, I, we're just going to follow that line, but there are other options like h6 or queen d2. You can do your own research on that. But here we're just going to talk about d4. 
and for knight c6, the move here is bishop a3. So uh, what is chosen in the game uh, by Anish was d takes c5, which is pretty good, but after queen c5 and queen d2, uh, knight f7, castle d6, h6, g6, bishop c4. Um, black does get the center here, so I would be, um, and also like still maintains an extra pawn, so I would be kind of reserved. Um, and this bishop a3 move is just really nice here. Um, so the only way to, I, I think, keep the pawn is like knight b4, because of queen c7, which is recommended by the computer, then at the very least we can take on c5, but computer recommends uh, queen d2 to prevent any queen a5, I guess. And next, yeah, this pin is very annoying. Oops, yeah, on this one, on this diagonal. So knight b4 here is the only critical try, then after h6, knight g6, and queen d2, um, let's say b6, h6, g6, uh, rook f7, obviously, they cannot take here because of queen h6 check. And after rook f7, bishop b2, um, we're preparing to support the pawn through this long diagonal. So let's say, okay, I mean, uh, rook takes g7, uh, a3 here, knight c6, I guess d5, or dc5 is pretty good. So yeah, that covers uh, essentially this line. Um, and this interesting maneuver of the of the knight like coming to e7 and then g6 here, it's just completely foiled, foiled by our, all of our plans with uh, this and then playing b3. So um, that covers everything, right? Um, I guess there's this move. Okay, so this is the last variation, I think. Okay, I promise. Uh, knight c6 here, knight c5, e5, and d4. Um, and here, um, black will play d6, most definitely. And the point is that we do not want to take here because if we exchange here, I just want to give a small illustration here. It would seem that we have, uh, that black has an isolated uh, or a... Um, yeah, an isolated center pawn here, isolated queen's pawn here. But the problem is that we don't have two knights. And without both knights on the board, we cannot get get our typical plan of, for example, knight b5 to d4 to blockade the pawn, and then we can put pressure on it. Now we don't have that option. And rather, black has um, the bishop here and can try to make use of that, um, yeah, possibly with some even aggressive intent here of like, I don't know, h6, g5 or something like that, or even f4. And then g5, yeah, the computer already says something like that, which I'm not a big fan of. So here we play bishop f4, very important. After c takes d4, e, d, e takes d6, bishop takes d6, bishop d6, queen d6, you play queen d2 to prepare long castles. And we're gonna win the pawn back eventually, don't be too afraid of that. Let's say queen e7, bishop e2, castles, and we castle long. After bishop d7, we bring both rooks into the game, rook hg1. After rook a e8, knight takes d4, we just take the pawn now. Queen h4 is a critical try to attack both, I mean, putting pressure on the knight on d4 and attacking both f2 and a on h2. But here we have the incredibly strong knight b5. We are trying to infiltrate to the b5, uh, to the d6 square, and there are some weak points in black's position. After queen takes f2, knight d6, rook e7, and bishop f3, we welcome the exchange of um, queens, even though we're down a pawn, because this pawn on d5 is also ex exceptionally weak, and so is this pawn on b7. So, queen takes d2, king d2, and let's say rook b8, we just take on d5 here, king f8, then rook f1. Um, next move, we want to play g4, let's say g6, then we play g4. After knight d4, we play c4, yeah, cementing our um, bishop on d5 here. Um, we have amazing rooks here, an amazing knight on d6. Uh, I think we're better here essentially it's still not over yet um, but the position is very pleasant and you shouldn't be complaining if you get this position and the last section of this video is that i just want to bring up one game that i lost um uh, a few months ago actually um, against this player on lee chess where we entered this after knight f6 i play e5 knight d5 knight c3 e6 knight e4 so i'm trying to remember what i learned to the best of my ability here but I just couldn't manage to do it after f5, and I play knight c3, very standard, and knight c6 here. And hoping and, and hoping that you know what to play here, because this is the last line we covered. We should play knight d5, e d5, and d4. Remember this. After d6, bishop f4, we cover this line in cd4, and e d6, bishop b6, bishop d6, queen d6, and remember, queen d2. So this is a completely good position for 
white and the computer already says plus one. Um, white is in very good shape. So remember, that's what you should go for. Do not be stupid like me. And I played something like ridiculously stupid, like bishop d3. Like what even is this bishop looking at? It's biting into granite on f5 and it even allows knight f4, which is horrible for, for white. I just castled here and knight takes d3, cd3. It's terrible. Awful, awful, awful. So that's something that I want to mention. Don't fall into my mistake here. And I'm hoping this video was helpful for you. Um, yeah, as usual, the PGN file, um, maybe also to this, yeah, the link to this Leecha study will be available in the link in the description if you want to study it for yourself. Um, yeah, I'm not going to include uh, Christoph Selecki's line, um, like main line, because that's obviously his work. So uh, if you want to do that, then you should definitely buy his course on keep it simple for black with, uh, keep it simple for white based on the move 1e4. So that's going to be it for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, sorry for rambling on for too long and hope you stay safe and have fun playing chess. So thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.